You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a professional motivational speaker, Nancy can assist you to blow through your setbacks and start living full out. If you have an inspirational story you want to share, email us at connect at livingfullout.com. Once again, here's Nancy. Hello and welcome to the Living Full Out Show. My name is Nancy Soleri and today we're going to be talking about being guided in life. Now, being guided might be by your faith. It might be by those who know you and love you, who are supporting you, who are guiding you to make good decisions. You might be guided by your education. Or sometimes we just get a little bit bounced around in life and that guides you along. But either way, we take a stand that we are right there beside you to help you make the best decisions you can. And that's something you always have to consider. And so that is going to be our focus today. We're also going to be joined by our inspirational guest, Ariana Platten. Really an interesting story about how she had to look deep within her to make her own faith decisions, kind of broke away from how she was raised and really found the love of her life, the husband number three, that was in alignment with her as well within her faith. It's a very interesting story, so can't wait to share that with you. And I want to make sure, too, that if you have an inspirational story, that you reach out to us at connect at livingfullout.com. Make sure you give us your name, contact information. We'd love to know, you know, what did you go through? What did you learn? How did you get through it? And perhaps we can have you on as an inspirational guest. Remember, again, if you're on the go in the car at the gym, you can go to the app store look for the living full out show app it's free and uh, we're here to inspire you even when you're working out now i am getting word from our producer that we do have a listener on the line we're going to go check in with them hello welcome to the living full out show hi hi thank you for calling in how can i help you well i have a challenge that i'm sure other people go through as well and it's maybe con complicated to explain, but I'll do my best. And it's not just me. I know there's other people that have been through similar circumstances, whether it's a spouse, whether it's a relative, but sometimes there's instances in life where somebody has wronged us. And, you know, I think with the best of intentions, we hope to just let go of that, be able to move on and move on from it, you know, almost like forgiveness. But then I've seen over and over again, not only for myself, but other people where that same person, and again, they're in a lot of cases related, so you can't just, you know, um, disregard them, that they then, um, they don't wrong you in the same way, but they might exhibit not great behaviors toward you or just in general, which then kind of almost makes it resurface the, in the pit of, my stomach or body, how the original wrong made me feel. And so, you know, I'm somebody who doesn't like to hold on to things. And, you know, in general, I do seem to move, move on, on from instances like that. But like I said, when I see recurring negative behavior, it reminds me that I actually haven't likely let go of it. So I don't even know if it's possible to really let go of things. And also internally, sometimes I feel like because of the wrong, I'm not sure that I want to let go of it. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm just looking for just some guidance on that because I don't think it's good to hang on to negative things. But at the same time, if you keep seeing some negative behavior, it's almost like I just don't know. You know, it, it's interesting. Um, it sounds like there's a couple people that you're thinking about when you're sharing this story. And so it sounds like it's more than one person. But in in the conversations you've had with these people, do you feel like anything you've ever said has made a difference? No. Okay. So we have a decision sometimes to make in life, which is how we want to live in the world. And if you are if you tell somebody something time and time again, and they don't receive it, they don't want to receive it, they don't make a change, you got a choice of either ignoring them, you you can't let them go, obviously, they're family, it sounds like, ignoring them, or choosing 
to no longer try. And you do have that choice. You can't not talk to them. You can't not coexist. But you can decide how much energy you want to put towards them because that is energy. And every time it, it goes towards them and it bounces off of them back to you, it's a rejection. It's a rejection of either you that you might be feeling or it's a rejection of what you're saying. And it, Actually, I think and, it's what – Sorry to interrupt, mm-hmm. but it's almost like it gives me the feeling of being re-injured mm-hmm. when I have a negative experience with them or somebody mm-hmm. in a similar situation, you know, it, it's like the feeling of being re-injured, you mm-hmm. know, from the initial wrong. It, it's just like, you know, it's not going to Well, and, and that's where you have to decide how you want to play that out. So you have the ability to say, you know what? This person is never going to change. In fact, I, they, I'm going to assume they may never change. But you know what? I'm going to be the higher and better, bigger person every time. But that takes mm-hmm. energy to be that higher, mm-hmm. bigger, better person. Or you have the ability to say, I'm going to coexist with them. But, you know, it's going to be at a very surface level. And... That's a safer level for you because you won't be re-injured every time. Mm -hmm. The other thing is people are really smart in this world. They really are. Even if you take the person who seems like the most checked out, lazy, not altogether person, even they're pretty smart. People know and can see and can hear when somebody is being inauthentic when they're mm-hmm. lying. It's just denial is what most of us go into as to whether or not we really want to hear it. But most people can smell that, taste that, feel that, see that. And so if you're having this reaction from those people, I would assume other people are having the same reaction. So you're probably they not do. in a rowboat by yourself. Um, right. Not that that gives you comfort, but do you sometimes right. feel that way? Oh, yes. Okay, so these people that are going to do things and say things that are poor in nature, unsavory, triggering to you, others are going to see that too. Mm -hmm. And you kind of have to let those people torture torture themselves. And you want to reframe it rather than making it seem like it's a personal attack or rather than your words are going on deaf doors ears, right? You you want to put yourself in a place of, you know what? I'm always going, well, you have two choices, right? I'm either always going to try, or mm-hmm. I I would like to just keep it amicable. And that's a choice. <laughs> okay, well, and I, well and I but, but, but what you don't want to do for. anymore what you don't want to do anymore is let them get your goat. Let them get to you. Because mm-hmm. you're, you're, it's kind of like, because what you said a little bit ago, you said that they, um, they weren't, you were giving them feedback, giving them advice, and, and they weren't receptive to it. So you might as well go and talk to a wall. So tell everything to the wall. Yell at the wall. Cry to the wall. Do whatever you need to do to the wall. But going to them with tears, going to them with anger, going to them with passion, isn't, it's just going to further trigger you because you're going to put all that energy towards them. It's going to bounce back off of them back onto you. And that's where it's triggering you is it's, it's, it's like a, they're like a wall. What you say is bouncing, it's coming back to you. At least if you're going to cry and yell to an actual true wall, you won't feel as triggered. Because you well, know it's and, a wall. And, and I mean, you know, just I, I really do exactly what you said. And like I said, I don't know if just, you know, I do try, you know, I don't go out of my way, but I'll try. And then I'll also just kind of be surface level. I, I do both of those, you know, but, you know, I just want, want to ask you, does that mean that I haven't let go of what happened? And should I be letting go of it? And how would I? Well, how, well, the letting go 
isn't erasing the past. You can't let go of their actions. You can't let go of their words. But what you have control over is whether or not you let them make you spin, trigger, whatever. So you just have to go into it knowing I'm either going to try and I'm going to say my piece and and they'll either run with it or not. Or you can say, you know what, I'm kind of going to just kind of become a little chili cucumber and, you know, we'll just coexist and, and you can't hurt me anymore. Mm-hmm. Okay. But okay. either way, you know, you're on the right track. That's the good news. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you probably have many, many walls in your house. So make friends with the walls. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for calling in. and. Thank you. For everybody, we're going to be coming right back with Ariana Platten, truly an inspirational story. May have you look at your own faith differently, but the thing is, it's all about getting out there, living full out with passion. We'll be back. Life looks a little different. During these times, we're doing our best to keep our minds and bodies strong. And getting a flu shot helps us stay healthy, so we don't miss out on what matters, like having game night at home. Yeah, can't do that while sick with the flu. Now imagine family movie night that your daughter can't live without. Well, that's ruined. And don't forget your uncle's socially distanced cookout. (coughs) See, that's why it's important to be at our strongest. Every year, millions of people in the U.S. get the flu. Especially now, no one has time to miss out on moments that matter. So get your flu shot. Find out more at GetMyFluShot.org. Brought to you by the AMA, CDC, and the Ad Council. Don't you wish your life came with a warning app? Stop. That dog does not want to be petted. (laughs) Just a little heads up before something bad happens. Move your coffee cup away from your computer. Oh, no, 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 no. So you can have more control. Stop. You're texting your boss by mistake. Uh Uh-oh. Well, life doesn't always give you time to change the outcome, but pre-diabetes does. With early diagnosis and a few healthy changes like managing your weight, getting active, stopping smoking, and eating healthier, you can stop pre-diabetes before it leads to type 2 diabetes. It's easy to learn your risk. Take the one-minute test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. Warning, the cap is loose on that (laughs) catch-up. Don't wait. You have the power to change the outcome. Visit doihaveprediabetes.org today. That's doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its pre-diabetes awareness partners. Uh Uh-oh, Brad's buzzed. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's starting with the woots. (laughs) And now a speech. I just want to say that friendship is about heart. Heart and brain. Who's with me? Good thing is, he knows when he's buzzed. And my brain is saying, when it's time to go home, somebody call me a ride. Love that guy. Me too. Know your buzzed warning signs? Call for a ride when it's time to go home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. Watch out! (laughs) You got me! The galaxy is safe once again. In the pretend universe, kids play with pretend guns. In the real world, it's up to us to make sure they don't get their hands on a real gun. If you have a gun in the house, keep it locked, unloaded, and stored separately from ammunition. Safe gun storage saves lives. Learn how to make your home safer at nfamilyfire.org. That's nfamilyfire.org. Brought to you by N Family Fire, Brady, and the Ad Council. Adopt U.S. Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting. A Teenager. Learning the Lingo. Today, I'm going to help parents translate teen slang. Now, when a teen says something is on fleek, it's exactly like saying, that's rad. It simply means that something is awesome or cool. Another one is totes. It's exactly like saying, totally, just shorter. As in, I totes love going to the mall with Becca. Another word you might hear is jelly. Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous. As in, Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will think you're, um, rad just the same. To learn more, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, 
Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a life coach, Nancy can teach you how to stay strong under pressure and work through challenges you face. Being legally blind, Nancy inspires others to be resilient in overcoming obstacles and live full out. You can ask Nancy for advice in your life on relationships, finance, business, health, and more. Just call in at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. Now, here's Nancy. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're talking about being guided. And being guided can be your faith. It can be the people in your life. But you have to be able to hear it. You have to be able to take action when you know that guidance is right in front of you. And our inspirational guest today, Ariana Platten, has done just that. She's had to listen. She's had to take actions in her life to achieve, you know, a childhood dream she had, you know, getting over medical conditions, you name it, everything in between. So I'm excited to share her story with you. I'd like to welcome Ariana to the show. Good morning, Nancy. Hi. It's nice to be here. Oh, so happy to have you. And um, one of the things I I, you know, I wish I could go back and like hang out with like seven year old Ariana because you were, you were competing uh, in terms of being a speaker at seven. What a cute little girl you must have been. Um, you grew up in a loving family, Catholic family. Your dad had been in the military, but a lot of love, brother, younger brothers. And, you know, I can only imagine just what a great upbringing you had, you know, a lot of structure, but again, a lot of love, but you had that support. You had that, that good upbringing, which kind of gave you confidence to go and do that early speaking. And you, in fact, had so much confidence at 12 because your brothers had had the awesome role of being altar boys. You were like, I want to do that. So my first kind of thing I want to share with the audience is, how did it go with Father Simon when you asked him to be an altar boy? N- not as not as good as I had hoped. <laughs> we um, we lived across the street from the church, and it was not an unusual thing to have the priest or the brothers who were over there come over and have dinner at our house. And so one of those incidents, one of those evenings, uh, Father Simon was over and everything was going well and the conversation was warm and friendly and I thought it was a good time to express that I thought girls ought to be able to be altar boys and that I wanted to know if it was okay, if if there was something that would stop me from being able to do that. And he said, without answering me, he said to my mom and dad, is it okay if I take you across the street, if I take your daughter across the street and um, talk to her at the church. And my mom said, sure, because why wouldn't she? It was that close and very convenient. And there weren't the kind of worries that we have today about about all of the kind of things that may have gone on in the Catholic church. So I went across the street with Father Simon and I was incredibly excited because why would he take me across the street unless I was in? So we, we went up the big stairs and opened the big doors, big, great, big wooden doors and ran down. I ran down the center aisle, which was this beautiful red carpet down to the front of the altar where that massive crucifix hangs. And as I got to the altar platform, he hollered at me from the church, from the back of the back of the church to stop. So I did. And he walked up to me and I was, I was kind of, facing sideways toward the platform and he turned me to face him and very sternly gave me a lecture about the fall of Eve and all the women that all the problems with women in the church and all the reasons that women could never serve in the church in that capacity and told me I was never to step up on that platform unless he called me up I was there to clean or I was there to get married and so I um, I I don't recall even saying anything to him. I recall leaving in tears and running back across the street and telling my mom I wasn't Catholic anymore. Well, those those definitely are not um, great options to be told at 12. I mean, not that marriage is bad, but, you know, it. I can see that being crushing. 
And, but, but again, I love you. I mean, I think that your spirit as a little girl, like I said, that little speaker in you, the fact that you even asked Father Simon, the fact that you had that confidence, you know, you're a girl after my own heart, really. And you took that as a quest, a quest to start figuring out other religions, you know, other ways in which, you know, you could, you know, be a woman and be a leader and be in ministry. And over time, you you experienced different walks, but you you found goddess culture. What is that? Goddess culture really relates to pre-Christian European indigenous teachings. So we all have we all have indigenous uh, people in our history. Indigene just means you come from the earth in a certain place. You belong to to a particular tribe, a particular group of people, a particular kind of uh, and have a particular kind of connection to the earth. So we often think of indigenous culture as being Native American, and we forget that we have our own as Europeans, which I happen to be. Um, we have, uh, or European heritage anyway, we forget that we have our own indigenous culture, that we came from a place and are part of a particular land. Uh, goddess culture is really has has happened, has grown all over the planet. There have been cultures that saw the act of giving birth as miraculous and because of that had their god form in a female body or female uh, presentation. And so it, it simply, for me, was understanding that there is, there is something about the holy that is not related to the physical male form that you can just as easily relate to God as goddess in the, this is still an intangible thing, right? So you can, you can place that holy connection in a form that you can relate to yourself. And that became very important to me. It became very important in my life to step outside of the vilification of women in mm. religion. You know, that, and, and the reason why I wanted you to explain that is because some may have heard of it, some may not, but that's an important part of your story because, again, you truly wanted to be an altar boy, you know? You want, you, you loved the Catholic faith, right? You, you, in, you go and be in church. That's your place. You know, this was um, something that you could even see yourself you know, having like a long career in, right? So figuring out what was going to be the faith for you, what that looked like for you was really important. Um, I want you to stay with us, Ariana, because as we walk through the rest of your story and we touch on some of the personal events in your life, it really brings it full circle as to why who you were as a little girl was so important and your quest to be a leader as a woman in ministry was so important. And for everybody listening, again, you might be guided by your faith. You might be guided by your intuition. You might be guided by influences, people. But it is today about opening your eyes, listening, you know, trying to get that guidance so that you can make the best decisions possible. So we're going to be right back. And this is the Living Full Out Show. Stay with us. Today in school, I learned a lot. In chemistry, I learned that no one likes me. In English, I learned that I'm disgusting. And in physics, I learned that I'm a loser. Today in school, I learned that I'm ugly and useless. And in gym, I learned that I'm pathetic and a joke. In history, I learned that I'm trapped. Today in school, I learned that I have no friends. In English, I learned that I make people sick. And at lunch, I learned that I sit on my own because I smell. In chemistry, I learned that no one In biology, I learned that I'm fat and stupid. And in math, I learned that I'm trash. The only thing I didn't learn in school today... The only thing I didn't learn today... The only thing I didn't learn... Is why no one ever helps. 
Kids witness bullying every day. They want to help, but they don't know how. Teach them how to stop bullying and be more than a bystander at stopbullying.gov. A message from the Ad Council. I'm Nancy Soleri, Certified Life and Business Coach. I want to invite you to the Personal Development Boot Camp. During the boot camp, we're going to be looking at taking those insecurities that you have and getting rid of them. We're also going to look at ways in which you can thrive and live a life full of purpose. Go to livingfullout.com forward slash boot camp, livingfullout.com forward slash boot camp to sign up. I believe in you and here's to you living your life full out. They'll challenge your authority. They'll try to break your will. They'll push you to the edge of your sanity. Because that's what kids do. But this car is your territory, not theirs. Defend it. Who makes the payments? Who cleans it? Who drives it? You do. That's who. And in here, your word is law. So when you say you won't move until everyone's buckled up, you won't budge an inch. Until you hear that click. Never give up until they buckle up. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. For more information, visit safercar.gov slash kids buckle up. Seven million children suffer from asthma more than any other chronic disease. Most asthma attacks are caused by allergic reactions to allergens, including those left behind by cockroaches and mice. In fact, 82% of U.S. households contain mouse allergens, and cockroaches are found in up to 98% of urban homes. How can you protect your family? Find out at PestWorld.org. A message from the National Pest Management Association and the American College of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology. I get it, slip it, cuff it, check it twice a day. I get it, slip it, cuff it, check it in the morning and before dinner. I get it, slip it, cuff it, check it, and share it with my doctor. Nearly one in two U.S. adults have high blood pressure. That's why it's important to self-monitor your blood pressure in four easy-to-remember steps. It starts with a monitor. Now that I know my blood pressure numbers, I talked with my doctor. We're getting those numbers down. Get it, slip it, cuff it, check it. Talk to doctor now and share it. Be next to talk to your doctor about your blood pressure numbers. Get down with your blood pressure. Self-monitoring is power. Learn more at manageyourbp.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council, the American Heart Association, and the American Medical Association. In partnership with the Office of Minority Health and Health Resources and Services Administration. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. With Nancy's expertise, you'll learn how to embrace your potential and strive for success. If you have a question or need further support, send us an email at connect at livingfullout.com. Now, here's Nancy. Welcome back. I'm Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're talking about being guided in life. And we're currently in our interview with our inspirational guest today, Ariana Platten, who is sharing with us so much of what she's gone through and and how she had to tap into figuring out for her, you know, what faith looked like, you know, what being a leader in a woman in ministry looked like. So I'd like to welcome Ariana back to the show. Thanks, Nancy. Great to be here. Nice to have you. And yeah, life just happens, doesn't it, Ariana? <laughs> just, you know, <laughs> we think we can make the, the best decisions possible, and we can even turn to our higher power for help, And but life just, just does happen. And you have been married three different times, and your first marriage was, was an abusive one, although you did, you know, have your two sons from that marriage. I know you love them dearly, but again, it was not the healthiest relationship due to the abuse. Your second marriage was also, you know, there was a lot of love there, but I know he dealt with alcohol and, and, and that was hard to, uh, to go through. And eventually that marriage ended. But again, you did get married a third time, third time's a charm and he's your forever guy. But the reason why I referenced those first two marriages is because 
You know, you are a really good person. You are a forward thinker. And when you look back on, and so many people, I guess, grapple with this, when you look back on those two marriages, you know, do you look at them as disappointments, you know, failures, or do you look at them as gifts or learning lessons? What does that look like for you? You know, uh, they were healing opportunities for me. I think, I think so often when we end up in a relationship that is not what we thought it was, we have an opportunity to learn so much about ourselves, what brought us to that relationship, what were we looking for in that relationship, um, in in the first case for me, I had been through a, a very difficult previous relationship where I was sexually abused and I was looking for someone who I thought was safe, someone who could protect me from the world. And he could have protected me from the world, but I didn't realize that I would need protection from him. In the second case, I married someone who uh, really I had come out of being a single parent for five years, which is a very difficult thing on every level and um, incredibly difficult financially because you're trying to be present to your children, give them every minute you can, and still make the living that's necessary to take care of your, your family. And I was looking for someone who had financial stability and job stability and could provide for me and my family in a good way. And I, the indicators were there that there was a problem and I kind of put on blinders because I had had a different picture of what I wanted for my family. So what I learned really from both of those was that I have to really approach relationship with my eyes fully open, with my heart fully open, and with a willingness to, to be responsible myself or who mm. I am in the world. And I love that. Once I was able, thank you. Once I was able to stand in, in my own personal power, I didn't really need to call in men who I thought could be the power behind me. Mm. No, that makes a lot of sense. And it is that wisdom that you just gave us <laughs> that eventually, at later, a little bit later in life, around forty nine. You, you did get an opportunity. You had been working with a church. You had been helping them with, you know, di- marketing and different aspects. And the, the moment came where they were looking to possibly have you minister. And you were only going to be there for a year. And you ended up being there for 11 years. And you eventually, though, as much as you loved it, you let it go. Maybe it was just time to retire, you know, you, you heard the whispers to retire and you, you, you the guidance and you, you did it, but it was also hard on your heart. And I think sometimes people don't realize with ministry how much negativity you were taking in. Yeah, I, I, you know, I would reframe that a little bit, Nancy. First of all, I, I think one of the most important things about, about ministry is many of us in ministry, really, you you hear people refer to the calling. I had a calling my entire life to be in that kind of service. It's very easy to recognize the calling in. It takes a particular awareness to recognize the calling out when your time in a particular place of service is over. And my calling out came, I was going to leave the year that COVID hit. And it required me um, staying another year. I stayed another year because I knew how hard it would be for a minister to step in and guide a community from in congregate from an in congregational setting to a to a, an online setting. So I stayed an extra year. When I left, um, I left with a a very heavy heart, a heart heavier than I realized. In the course of that 11 years, the community I served lost nine children. I did life celebrations for nine children of all different ages, everything from infant death to a murder in the family to a terrible accident uh, to suicide. And when you guide a family through the loss of of a child, there is no place for the minister to grieve. The minister has to be incredibly strong 
to stand with the family. When you lose grandma, it's hard, but we all know we're going to lose grandma and we get through it over time. Every parent dreads the remote possibility that they will lose a child and we don't get over losing our children. So when you lose, when you are the minister walking with someone, you are walking a very long path and you are staying in uh, compassion with them the whole time. So I realized when it was all over how, how much compassion fatigue I was carrying and how I had been raising children alongside these experiences and how much fear I held around my own children at the same time. So Mm -hmm. there was a tremendous amount of of healing necessary when I could finally take care of myself and step away from congregational ministry. Mm -hmm. No, that, that beautifully said. And I, we, you know, we're short on time, but I, I want to just reference one thing real quick because this is so important to your story. You know, you, you've said it before, COVID saved your life in some respects because you found out during that time that, you know, a tumor was found and it was cancerous. And you had to move very, very quickly between the time that you were retiring to finding out about the cancer, to having the surgery. And I'm just wondering, you've learned so many lessons as a woman, as a leader in ministry. What did cancer teach you? Hmm. Cancer taught me that I'm mortal, <laughs> that, that there is a time and place for taking care of myself. Um, I have lived in a world where caring for other people has really been the the kind of the passion and purpose of my life to be present and available in service to other people. It taught me to slow down and recognize the, the value of my own breath. When, you know, when I had a quarter of my lung removed and um, have recovered and can breathe, but in the process, in the place between surgery and recovery was a period of time where finding my breath, with every step was sometimes incredibly difficult. And um, the, to understand the power of the breath in our body, to, uh, to be present in our own body, to bring our soul forward from a place that starts in the gut instead of the mind, uh, those lessons have, have really driven this part of my life. Hmm. Again, beautifully said. And I guess as we round out today's, you know, interview, what does living full out mean to you? Living full out means being unafraid of learning and changing. I think we, um, sometimes we try so hard to be solid in who we are that we forget life is about exploration, about opening up to all the possibilities of the ways we can express in the world. Hmm. You know, I got to tell you, Ariana, I have had a lot of caffeine today. I've already told my production team this, but I love hearing your voice. I just wish I could like record it and then fall asleep to it. It's very soothing. I can see why you were so successful, as, you know, in ministry for so many years and a good guide. We're talking today about guidance. And so I want to thank you very much for being on today's show and being that light for so many others. It's my pleasure, Nancy. Thanks so much for inviting me. Absolutely. And for everybody listening, we just love having inspirational guests like Ariana come and share her story and what she's learned. And, you know, it is about paying it forward. And We all have stories. You might think, I don't have much to share. I bet you do. Sometimes what happens to us spans a lifetime. Sometimes it's just during a a pocket of time in our life. But truly, we would love to hear from you uh, and perhaps have you on as an inspirational guest. Uh, Do reach out to us at connect at livingfullout.com. Make sure that you give us your contact information. Let us know what you went through, how you got through it, 
what you learned, because this community is truly about lifting each other up. And while we try to bring guests that help guide you to making good decisions and trusting your instincts and following your heart and loving big and so many different topics that we talk on, you know, we want to make sure that you also are able to equally share in this community. And so we won't know you're there if you don't reach out to us. So again, that is connect at livingfullout.com. And if you are on the go, you're at the gym, you're in the car, and you want to stay inspired, maybe hear uh, this interview again with Ariana or any of our interviews, make sure you go to the App Store. Look for the Living Full Out Show app. It's free. It's right there. Um, but it's very important to us that we stand beside you every step of the way uh, in your journey of living full out. We'll be coming right back after this break. Stay with us. To some people, the sound of a baby babbling doesn't mean much. But that's not necessarily true. By six months, they're combining vowels and consonants. By nine months, they're trying out different kinds of sounds. And by 12 months, their babbling is beginning to take on some meaning especially if there's no babbling at all. Little to no babbling by 12 months or later is just one of the possible signs of autism in children. Early screening and intervention can make a lifetime of difference and unlock a world of possibilities. Take the first step at AutismSpeaks.org. A public service announcement brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. Most of us like to be out in the sun. That's why sunscreen and other safety measures are key to protecting your skin from aging and cancer. The FDA recommends using a sunscreen with a sun protection factor, or SPF, of 15 or higher. Also, look for broad spectrum on the label. That means both harmful ultraviolet A and B rays are blocked. UVA rays age the skin, UVB rays burn, and both cause cancer. But the perfect sunscreen doesn't count if you use it wrong. Don't need sunscreen on a cloudy day? Wrong. 80% of UV rays still get through the haze. Only use sunscreen at the beach? Nope. Anytime you're outside, UV rays attack the skin, so you need protection. And you have to reapply sunscreen every two hours. Remember, SPF plus broad spectrum equal healthy fun in the sun. Visit www.fda.gov sunscreen for more information. A message from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Right now, our country feels divided, but there's a place where people are coming together. I got to tell you, I was nervous to talk to someone so different than me. Me too, but I'm glad we are. Love Has No Labels and One Small Step are helping people with different political views, beliefs, and life experiences come together through conversation, and it feels good. Wow, your story is so... Uh, Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> When people actually sit down, talk, and listen to one another, they can break down boundaries and connect as human beings. At lovehasnolabels.com slash one small step, you can listen to amazing, life-changing conversations and find simple tools to start a conversation of your own. I know one thing. This conversation gives me hope. It gives me a lot of hope, too. Take a step toward bringing our country and your community together by having the courage to start a conversation at lovehasnolabels.com slash one small step. A message from StoryCorps, Love Has No Labels, and the Ad Council. All right, crew, let's get her dug. Honey, you want to give me a hand? I'm planting that tree, remember? No matter how large or small your digging project may be, no matter how urban or rural, you must always call 811 before any digging project. 811 is our national one-call number alerting your local utility companies to come out and mark any lines they have near your dig site. You must call 811 at least two to three business days before any digging project, so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. 
This includes natural gas and petroleum pipelines, electric, communication cables, and water and sewer lines. So before you do this, or this, make sure you do this. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. Brought to you by Common Ground Alliance. When it comes to being guided, sometimes it's like the clouds part and the angels sing. Oh, sometimes not, though. Sometimes it's super quiet. And you know what? When it's quiet, listen to your mind. Listen to the sweaty palms, your heart racing. Follow your gut. Follow your intuition. Be guided by your faith. Listen to those that love you and, tr and that you trust. Because truly, being guided is going to get you to living full out. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Solari. As a professional motivational speaker, Nancy can assist you to blow through your setbacks and start living full out. If you have an inspirational story you want to share, email us at connect at livingfullout.com. Once again, here's Nancy. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we've been talking about being guided. And while this theme really resonates with me, I mean, when I think about going legally blind, I have been guided by low vision, talking technology that literally guides. I mean, I read my emails with my ears, and my ears are hanging on the every word of the program I use called JAWS, but it guides me through my work day. And then I think about back when I had to give up driving and when things became really blurry and I had to learn white cane training. Oh my goodness. And that's hard. It is because the, you, you move the cane along the ground and it gets stuck sometimes on the edges of the sidewalk, or you can put a roller on the end, but still get stuck. I was not the best white cane user, but I, I gave it my best. But the white cane couldn't tell me about branches. I definitely hit my good handful of those. So although it guided me down the sidewalk, it kind of left, left me with some uh, bangs and bruises on my forehead. And then the day came where I got my guide dog, Frost. Now, getting a guide dog is, it's really fascinating. So when I got Frost, I got him in 2021. He was a pandemic baby. And I remember opening up the gate and there was this beautiful yellow Labrador and he was goofy and smiling and started licking me. And I was like, wow, this is great. And uh, we came upstairs, we bonded a bit. And then she said, okay, we're going to um, go out and I'm going to have put the harness around me. It was kind of a, a, an example harness so I could see what it would feel like without having frost. And that's kind of how they train you at first. My trainer would put this around her waist. I would hold on to the handle and kind of get the feel for what it would be like and starting to learn the different commands. So while I'm holding the harness with my left hand, with my right hand, I'm doing certain motions or I'm saying, you know, forward to have them go forward or right or left or halt. And and it was just really interesting to see that process. And then then the day came when we put the harness that you've all seen. If you haven't, you can go to Guide Dogs for the Blind and see this harness. You put it on the dog, it straps around them and walked out with frost and we were off. And it wasn't like I was holding frost in my left hand and I had my trainer holding my right hand. It was just me and frost. And my vision at this point, when you get to a point where you get a guide dog, you, you really can't see too much. You might see light, dark, everything's really blurry. So it's not like I was going to see the, the curb or any definition in stairs or anything like that. So literally, Frost was guiding me, and we learned so much with our trainer. And then after a certain amount of weeks, she was gone. And then it came to the very first walk, just Frost and I. <laughs> and uh, we actually are fearless, the two of us, and we went off onto the beach. So now there weren't even sidewalks. Now all Frost had to guide him was the coastline, and all I had was holding on to his harness and trusting that he wasn't going to walk me into sunbathers or walk me into the water or walk me into a lifeguard, to lifeguard tower. 
And I'll got, got to tell you, that little buddy, he is great. Now, I am single, and I think to myself, man, if I could find like a two-legged frost, my life would be set because that dog, chivalry is not dead. He is very kind. He he takes me to the curbs and he stops, and then I'm able to kind of tap the curb with my foot and take a confident step down. Or if I'm going up the other way, I can. He gets up on the curb, shows me that there's a curb there, and I step up on the curb, and and then we're off. And it's just so loving and great to know that someone like myself who loses their vision, that we have guide dogs. Now there are other animals out there that help with if you are if you have diabetes, if you uh, can have stroke seizures. You know, whatever that may be for you, I am just a huge, huge fan of guide dogs, service animals, emotional support animals. But most of all, guides come in all forms. Again, it could be God speaks to you. I know when I am having a really hard day, faith is important to me. I might just be kind of sad or frustrated and I might be talking to him and all of a sudden I feel like this tingling down my arm. And it almost feels like a hug, like I got you, Nancy. Yes, this is not something you really want to go through. I'm sorry that this is going to torture you, but you're going to get a lesson out of it. But it's a guide. Or sometimes I turn to one of my very best friends, my mom, and her name's Carol. Love her. She is my queen. And uh, I, I do respect her guidance. I, I, I think she's very wise in the life that she's overcome between different relationships and my dad had an affair she lost her second and third husband they passed away due to different illnesses and being a single mom raising three girls who all by the way we all three have RP which is this condition that's led us all to go legally blind so again for me God frost my guide dog my mom such great guides. And I know that you have one in your life, maybe two or three. Today is the day that you thank them. Text them, call them, love on them, because that's what being your guide is all about. They want you to know that they, they have you they have your back, basically. So thank you everybody for listening today. Today it's all about getting out there, letting those guides lead you along so that you truly can live an abundant life, have fun, don't forget about that, but most of all, get out there and live full out. Thank you for listening to the Living Full Out Show with Nancy Solari. To learn more about this program, visit livingfullout.com for the latest episodes. Connect with the Living Full Out community by following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Here's to you, Living Full Out.